Another day in paradise. So what up? Anyway, uh, I'm just a random guy that goes by the name of Pork Chop Black. But that's all you need to know. But anyway, today's workout is going to be consists of uh, the glory for the legs. We're going to be in our legs more. So today's workout, you know, we're going to throw, throw in some burpees every now and then. So the warm up, I just do 25, one pump. And then at the east set, uh, east set of burpees, you know, I'm going to throw in uh, 20 to 25 lunges on each leg. So I'm going to start off with uh, two pumps on the leg. So I'm going to lunge, run up, two pumps. I guess you want to say a pulse, you know, you go up, down, up, down, go back, the other leg, up, down, up, down, you know, and so on until you get to 20. Uh, we'll do another 25 one pumps. Again, we're going to do 25 three pumps on the leg. So lunge, one, up, down, up, down, up, down. You get the picture. So anyway, it's one of those days. It's day day, glory day for the legs. We got to get it in. Legs are very important. If you ain't hitting the legs like it's supposed to, shame on you. Shame on you. It's not about just hitting your upper body all the time. Make sure you hit your legs because the legs are very important. No matter how you put it, you need strong legs. Here we go. Oh yeah, don't forget your calves too. <laughs> Goes over to you know to the school system, to the education system, Six. and our you know kids are paying for that. Kids are paying for the simple fact that there's a lot more pressure Seven. on them, and they're weaker minded. Think about that. Society now is weaker minded, and there's a shit ton more Eight. pressure than what we had when we were growing up. I'm all, I'm 43 years old. And all right. Society now. All right. How hard it is to keep yeah. up with everybody else? Because why? You can look at your phone. And see how great the whole fucking world is. Because the whole world is only sharing what the fuck they want you to know about them. They're not sharing, you know, their bad shit. That's how hard life really is. You know, with them trying to overcome and all those things like that. So, and, and that's what makes you a, an absolute winner by the fact that you are in life. So, I mean, we're doing these kids a, 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 a huge well. injustice. And um, I, I mean, I can talk about this today. The only way you're going to fix yourself from 13. being a snowflake, from being soft, from being a weak person is honestly, uh, you have to be really wrong. 14. I invented this thing years ago called the accountability bear. And it's how you, it's how you cure 15. the uh, snowflake epidemic. You you put yourself in front of a, a mirror. 16. You get ready for work or school or whatever you're doing. And only you know how fucked up you are. 17. You can lie to everybody. You can lie to your girlfriend. You can lie to your boyfriend. You can lie to people at school. You can't lie to yourself. 18. So what I did is I lied so much and I was so insecure growing up. Is that how I cured my self? 19. Because like, I got in front of a mirror with just me and my pathetic self. 19. And I'm going to write six notes all over this mirror. About how fucked up I am, about what I can say for myself, 20. about how real um, I need to attack my life, the situation, the mistakes, the situation I'm afraid to say. 21. It starts to man up. And um, so I tell you right now, um, it's not getting any better right now. This, this, this world, especially the U.S., we are we are soft as soft can be. You can't three. say a fucking thing. Everybody can these are the ones who work smarter, uh, not harder. 24. Because the ones who make the most. 
everybody's got right. a the movement going on, knowing the man. It's just, um, you know, everybody's going to the same thing. <laughs> And you don't get better that way. Twenty five. You gotta have total. And we use uh, like I hate using these damn words because they're they're thrown around so willy nilly nowadays. Accountability, mental toughness, grit, all this shit, man. So I hate even saying it, but it's true. But I'm gonna go a step further. So all right, it's all it's the line just with a two pump. You have to look at yourself in the mirror and say, okay, I'm bitchy, I'm whiny, I complain. I have an eight-hour job that only works three or four hours a day. Um, Why? We we have to really bring it back to ourselves. So basically, and, and once again, I'm so, not a tough guy. I'm I, so so I'm not a tough guy. I realize I have to become a tough guy to succeed in right. society. Right. Well, for me, um, the reason why I did that is I realized that I wanted to also try the easiest. And this is the mindset behind me. If I'm going to go to the hardest training, I want the hardest spot in the uh, worst position in the hardest training in the world. And what that does is, if my mindset is going to the hardest place, uh, like, like, like in uh, in Hungary, when you train the boat, the toughest spot to be in is the number one spot. It's the heaviest part of the boat, and I never left that position because the more your mind for a comfort, any kind of comfort, it will continue what to find more and more of it. But the way I trade my mind is, I want to find the Eight. hardest location known to man. And if and then my mind continues to go that way versus the other nah. way. Because once you start giving yourself a way out, oh, you know what, I'm going to run five miles today. I'm going to run four miles. For me, it's like, no. I'm going to go to the opposite way. My mind continues to get harder and harder and harder because I knew the second I gave it a way out, it was going to take it. And I also wanted to choose the hardest way because it was my way of motivating yeah. people. So how I motivate people is because I was a broke teacher going through all my health issues. And how I motivate people is to be the suckiest mother thing on the planet Earth and watch them. Thirteen. Excel. I won't say up the words you but we see me broken down, stuff, legs broken. When I go back to number one, you're gonna look at me and say, Roger that. Let me follow the guys. But I do it by example. I do the hardest hit. The people follow me say, Yeah, that's what I wanna be behind that mother right there. Had nothing, but no one came to say. Seventeen. Me. I didn't win a trophy with this I you know I, I was a bad student, and people told me I was a bad student. People told me I was a failure. Now I was going to be a loser. While those words were hard, you have two options when you have those words in front of you. Nineteen. Either sack it up, or else go be a and go high. I mean, that's the thing about it. People think that this is something that. That's uh, right. Every day, oh, it must be a routine for David. Yeah, that's a routine, but the routine goes like this. I wake up, I feel sorry for myself. I don't want to do it, and I say, hey, you're being a good one. Twenty-one. Second, stuff that's good. I want to be like, I had to be the mother of the that could carry any cross. Twenty-two. 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 Who can words and not say the stars they they break my bones? No, words hurt. Twenty-four. Words not be hurt. So I started to develop myself. I developed myself. It wasn't about money. It wasn't about fame. It wasn't about oh. women. It was about I have to have so much pride in myself that nothing can hurt me. Oh. No, can't hurt me. So basically, what I did was I said, how am I gonna do this? So, I'm going to have to literally start doing things I don't want to do and doing them to the best of my ability because that's why I started gaining this mental edge. I'm going to realize life isn't about all this bullshit. 
life is about one thing, being proud of the person you see in the mirror. So once that started happening, the mind started callousing. Six. And the more the mind started callousing, the more people could receive. And I became unsettling. Listen, we are our worst enemy, especially nowadays. We want everything to come Eight. over fucking night. All of our results have to come today. If like I lose a hundred six pounds in less than three months, pretty, pretty daunting task. But if I had the mindset of I have to lose a hundred six pounds today, I, like it took me eighteen you months. Disappear. I disappear. I literally lost. I I failed three times to be a Navy SEAL. It took me Eleven. eighteen months to be a Navy SEAL. The program's only six fucking months long. So what we have to do is we have to set our well, new norm, our new normal. What does that mean? Our new normal. When I was in SEAL training, I was getting the shit kicked out of me every fucking day. Thirteen. And I kept on getting rolled back to day one, rolled back to day one, week one. Most people would have fucking quit, but my mindset is doing this. This is my new normal. Fourteen. My new normal is I get up at four o'clock in the fucking morning. I get my fucking ass kicked every fucking day of my life. There's nothing outside of this world for me right now. This is my life. Like people who become POWs, prisoners of war. If they can't change 16. their mind to think this is my new fucking normal, this is this is my life. This is where I live. You have to 17. become adjusted to where you're at. A lot of people say, yeah, you have to be able to look beyond this. Sometimes the pain is so 18. visible, the suffering is so intense. If you look too far beyond anything, you're going to quit. 19. <laughs> no. He knocked my mom out from top 19. of the I could see him coming down the stairs, just dragging her. And she was kind of lifeless. And that's when I 20. dropped the couch, scared to death. Jumped up my father and he beat the shit out of me. We never went to school at all because he was bruised up. He also believed in this, us working together for going to school. The only thing that the back of the house that I learned was to do it. I never get the third grade. There was just two three that was extremely rough. And at this time in my life, I did not need this. And she believed I needed to be in a special school Four. because of my learning disability. And this is what I was talking about. People are talking about manage your expectations. <laughs> this teacher managed my five. expectations. She saw I had a learning disability. She saw I was socially <laughs> unable to survive in this world. She saw I was messed up. So she managed my expectations. She said, we need to put David Goggins in a special school. I came from hell. And when you come from hell not knowing how to fight, this is what happens to you. You have to do it if you become a fucked up kid that cannot survive in society. I never forget one time during a basketball game, there was this coach, Mr. Trout. He knew me when I was a kid in that school when I was in third grade. Very step back. Mr. Trout always loved me. This white man loved the shit out of me. I don't know why he did. But he was my JV basketball coach my sophomore year. The visiting team was at our home stadium. We got to the end of the game. When the busy team started chanting, I was only a black person in the whole dad going stadium. They started chanting, uh, nigger, nigger, nigger. That's all I remember. At that time in my life, that's all I remember. But now I'm 42 years old. I can look back at that time with clear eyes, that's and a clear mind, and see what Mr. Trump meant to me. He went in that locker room where I was crying and upset, and he cried with me. This white man cried with me, but at that time, I didn't see that. All I saw was red. I saw hate. The whole town hated me. Everybody's against me. My mind lost it. And for some reason, I can't see how I'm dead. And to this day, I don't know why the floor is so poor comfortable. And at 20, 21 years old, I went from 175 pounds to 297 pounds. That out of shape, insecure. I was everything.
Today is a new opportunity to chase a dream. It's not going to be easy. We may not be up to the task. We may not feel tough enough, good enough, or that we can ever achieve greatness. We must find joy in Because what we work for is what we become.
hard work, late nights, early mornings, practice, rehearsal, repetition, study, sweat, blood, toil, frustration, and discipline. It's about eight Ooh, your fears. See? It's discipline to face your fears so you can conquer them. Discipline, the root of all good qualities, the driver of okay. daily execution. Stronger, smarter, faster, healthier. Envision what it feels like when you're done. What it feels like after you've worked out, or you've held the line on your food intake, or you've put through some monotonous project. And contrary to that, envision what you will feel like later when you let the discipline slack. Repetition, study, sweat, blood, toil, frustration, and discipline. Nineteen. Facing your fears. It's discipline to face your fears so you can conquer them. Discipline, the root of all good qualities, the driver of daily execution. Stronger. Faster, That's 20. healthier, better, That's 20. Free. Envision what it feels like when you're done. What it 
after you've worked out, or you've held the line on your food intake, or you've pushed through some monotonous project.
we all have two people. Yeah, I'm not saying you're crazy. You have the easy voice, which is that 20% telling yourself that you're, I'm easy at 90% of my full potential, maybe 100% at that 20%. That's that voice that we all love. That's that very comfortable voice that, that's that mommy holding you saying it's going to be. Doesn't care how good you are, just loves you. Just loves you no matter how messed up you are in life. This other voice that we walk very far away from is the voice saying, hey man, you ain't going to So we try to get this voice out of our head completely. And we live over here in this land. So what you have to do first is turn up this voice over here. The voice saying things to you that aren't nice. That it's in our head saying, you know what, man? Dude, you're not, you're not doing this. And it's not putting yourself down. People take this the wrong way in this new society. I'm not saying to put yourself down. I'm saying listen to the truth. And the truth isn't in the 20%. The truth is in this other part of your brain saying, look, man, you're wasting a bunch of percentage here. We have 80 more percent that we're not tapping into because in this other 80% is it. suffering, pain, failure, 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 self-doubt, darkness, and then a whole bunch of light. But to get to this light, you got to go through all of this so a lot of us know that. I can get over here, but over here, man, this is much better because I gotta go through this journey that is not fun. This this from 20 to 100%, this in between is not fun. So we decide to live over here. So everybody goes, how do you do that? You know exactly how to do that. You know exactly, it's, it's not a magic trick. There's nothing I talk about in that book that's a magic trick. It's all, back down to a very primitive mindset of we just have to do. It's like breathing. Breathing becomes normal. Like, we didn't know that, that, that we're doing it. That's how you have to live your life. When that alarm clock goes off at four or five in the morning, your mind says no. You just say, this is what we do. what we do now. Because to get to where you want to go, the amount of pain involved, I'm not saying physical, I'm not saying you gotta break yourself off. The amount of mental pain All right. of how many times you're gonna have to do so something do, uh, that you don't want to do six, six pounds. to get to where you want to go. There's gonna be, it, it, gonna be more times you do something that, that you don't want to do than you are gonna want to do. And that's, that, that's your new norm. That's your new norm. So then it's like breathing. And then once you do this over and over and over again, it becomes like breathing. I don't want to live this lifestyle, but to get to the other side of this, I have to. So if you really want it, you realize what trying is and what trying is not. You're not working your butt off hard enough. You're not trying hard enough. We all think you're trying hard, but what are you gauging that off of? I talked to this one kid the other day. College is kicking my ass. I said, what are you gauging that off of? I go, are you trying? He goes, yeah, I'm trying my ass off. I'm studying hard. I go, what are you gauging trying hard off of? Well, in high school, I didn't have to try at all. And I made great grades. In college, I'm trying hard. You're trying hard compared to what you did in high school, which was it came easy to you. So your reality is something you created off of something easy. So you trying hard is two hours of studying. I'm gonna tell you the difference in trying hard and trying hard. Trying hard is something in your mind just doesn't stop. We, we, we know two hours isn't enough. When I was 297 pounds, and I was fat as hell trying to be a Navy SEAL, the scariest thing in the world to be used this day was that that could have been the rest of my life. I thought then I was trying hard. That's the scariest thing in the world. I thought then 297 pounds working for Ecolab, spraying for cockroaches, making $1,000 a month. I thought that was me at my 100% potential. Come to find out, a few years later, I wasn't anywhere near that. 106 pounds less, graduated Navy SEAL training, went on to do all these other things. Looking back on that, that was me trying hard. 
understand. That's what people gotta understand. What is in us, we have no idea until we start trying hard. And I mean really trying hard when you're obsessed with, hey, this is my new norm. This isn't always fun. It's not always meant to be fun. And that's when you know you're trying hard. I have this haunting voice in the back of my head. A lot of us have it. We just ignore it. And it was there for years. So I knew in the back of my mind that I could pull off this whatever. Whatever I wanted, I knew I could. But I, I was afraid of the work. Because I wasn't gifted with brains. I wasn't gifted with God-given talent as far as like athleticism. So I knew to get to where I had to go, to be on the same playing field as these men, to even try out for this program, I knew the work was gonna be something that I didn't wanna even, even attack. So I'll just put it off. But yet you did it. Because it haunted me. The voice in my head said, you know what, man? You're gonna die. Never even trying to reach your I developed a reality that wasn't real. That's the thing we always do. We can have a great life, but we always build this reality on the one thing we don't have. So therefore, our great life, you don't see it. We see the one piece of clothing we weren't able to get versus the amazing things we have. So we focus on that. I was the king of focusing on the one bad thing in my life. The one bad person called me nigger. The, everything bad, I focused on that. But over here was the beautiful reality of my life. Even though I came from nothing, where I could have taken my mind to the possibilities of where I can go if I work harder. That was all over here. If I lived in the filth over here, this was the life that you were supposed to live. But you didn't try. Just by going to war with myself every day and putting these challenges and these goals and these obstacles, these insurmountable obstacles. So it wasn't about losing 106 pounds. Me losing five pounds was an accomplishment. Me losing 10 pounds and then 50 pounds. And then the more I did this, the more I gained confidence. And then the more I gained confidence, the more I realized, these men see this, man. These guys can't do what I'm doing right now. I have no coach, had no trainer, had no money. I didn't know how to lose weight. I had no knowledge of what I was doing. I was just working. I was just sacrificing. And then through that, all of these different tools started coming up. But I would have never found these tools if I didn't put myself in a very uncomfortable place. We all look for toughness. We all want it, but we look for it in a comfortable environment. You will not find toughness in a comfortable environment. Those of you who are listening to this, whoever hear this, you will not find it. I will try to look for it everywhere. The only way you find it is to drown yourself in a position where you're just out of sorts, where you can't swim and you're drowning. Where you're drowning. You're drowning in life. Can you say, no, man? Like that. I'm going to figure out how to backstroke or something. And then through, through figuring out all these tools, your mind starts to, when you quit, your mind does this. Because you're out. Once you say, I'm not going to quit, this is the 40%. When, when you quit, your mind says, we're done. So it doesn't expand. There's no expansion when you quit. When you say, you uh-uh, this sucks, I'm drowning, I'm miserable, I'm suffering, I'm broken, but I'm not going anywhere. What happens to your mind is it does this. It says, he's not leaving. So we gotta expand, we gotta grow, we gotta figure this thing out. So then these compartments in your brain start to have, they have to work, they have to work. And then you start to engage parts of your mind that you never engaged before. But you can't engage it by sitting back in these nice chairs, drinking this nice water, talking to you, talking about what I want to do. That's where, so that's where the 40% thing comes in. It comes in when you're in suffer mode and you say, I'm not going to quit. You're forcing your brain now to operate.
on a level it's not used to. But then he becomes used to it. If you sleep on your side, I think. If I grew up in this day and age, if I was a millennial or whatever they call them nowadays, I there would be no David God, no one ever heard of me. So I'm I'm very blessed that I grew up in the in, in the time frame that I did because there is no mental toughness, there is no self discipline. Everybody gets a trophy, and, and I hate to say it, but you're gonna lose your life. Well, I mean, society in general has just gotten weaker all across the board. So that trickles over, that kind of spills over to you know to the school system, to the education system. And our you know kids are paying for that now. Kids are paying for the simple fact that there's a lot more pressure on them and they're weaker minded. Think about that. Society now is weaker minded and there's a shit ton more pressure than what we had when we were growing up. I know I'm 43 years old and I look at society now with how hard it is to keep up with everybody else. Because why? You can look at your phone and see how great the whole fucking world is. Because the whole world is only sharing what the fuck they want you to know about them. They're not sharing, you know, their bad shit, how hard life really is. You know, what they're trying to overcome and all those things like that. So and that's what makes you a, an absolute winner by the fact that you are. I mean, we're doing these kids a, a, a huge injustice, and um, I, I mean, I can talk about this today, but the only way you're going to fix yourself from being a snowflake, from being soft, from being a weak person, is honestly, you have to be really raw. I invented this thing years ago called the accountability there, and it's how you, it's how you cure the uh, snowflake epidemic. You, you put yourself in front of a fucking mirror while you're getting ready for work or school or whatever you're doing. And only you know how fucked up you are. We can lie to everybody. You can lie to your girlfriend. You can lie to your boyfriend. You can lie to people that's at wrong, school. You can't lie to yourself. So what I did was I lied so much and I was so insecure growing up is that how I cured my snowflake is I got in front of a mirror with just me and my pathetic self. And I'm gonna write sticky notes all over this mirror about how stuff I am, about what I need to change for myself, about how real um, I need to attack my life, the situations that I'm facing, the situations I'm afraid to face, and start to man up. And um, so I tell you right now, um, it's not getting any better right now. This 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 world, especially the U.S., we are we are soft as soft can be. You can't say a thing. Everybody gets offended. Everybody's got a little movement going on, knowing the man. It's just, uh, you know, everybody's so thin, thin. And you don't get better that way. You get worse. You gotta have total. And we use, uh, like, I hate using these damn words because they're they're thrown around so willy nilly nowadays. Accountability, mental toughness, grit, all this shit, man. So I hate even saying it, but it's true. But. I'm going to go a step further. Self, it's all, it starts with yourself. You have to look at yourself in the mirror and say, okay, I'm bitchy, I'm whiny, I complain, I have an eight hour job that only work three or four hours a day. Um, we, we have to really bring it back to ourselves. So basically, and, and once again, I'm not a tough guy. I'm, I, so, so I'm not a tough guy. I realized I had to become a tough guy to succeed in society. Right. Well, for me, um, the reason why I did that is I realized that I wanted to also choose the easiest route. And this is the mindset behind me. If I'm going to go through the hardest training, I want the hardest spot in the worst position in the hardest training in the world. Because what that does is, if my mindset is going to the hardest place, like like, like in, uh, in Hell Week, when you're carrying the boat, the toughest spot to be in is the number one spot. It's the heaviest part of the boat, and I never left that position. 
because the more your mind searches for a comfort, any kind of comfort, it will continue what to find more or other. But the way I train my mind is, I want to find the hardest location known to man. And, if, and then my mind continues to go that way versus the other way. Because once you start giving yourself a way out, oh, you know what, I'm going to run five miles today. I'm going to run four miles. You know, for me, it's like, no, I'm going to go the opposite way. So my mind continues to get harder and harder and harder because I knew the second I gave it a way out, it was going to take it. And I also wanted to choose the hardest way because it was my way of motivating people. So how I motivate people is, because I was a broke teacher going through all my hell weeks. And how I motivate people is give me the suckiest mother thing on the planet Earth and watch me excel. Watch me keep excel. Now, I won't say a word here, but when you see me broke down, stuck, legs broken, and I go back to the number one spot on that to go to the happiest thing known to man, you're going to look at me and say, Roger that. Let me follow this guy. So I do shit by example. I do the hardest shit. The people following me say, yeah, that's what I want to be behind that mother right there. And nothing, but no one came to save me. I didn't win a trophy for this happened. I didn't know, I, I was a bad student, and people told me I was a bad student. People told me I was going to be a failure, and I was going to be a loser. While those words were hard, you have two options when you have those words in front of you. Either sack it up, or else go be a, and go high. I mean, that's the thing about it. People think that this is something that's uh, every day. Oh, it must be a routine for David. Yeah, it's a routine, but the routine goes like this. I wake up, I feel sorry for myself, I don't want to do it, and I say, hey, you're being a sack of the f*** up, let's go. I in life, I had to be the mother that could take anything, that could carry any cross, two or three cross, and any cross that so I developed this talent. I want to say happy 60th birthday to Specs. I just want to congratulate Specs on 69. A, a man that can walk through a fire and not get burnt. Who can take words and not say six to start may, may break my bones. No, words hurt. But I want to get to the point where nothing hurt me. So I started to develop myself. I developed myself. It wasn't about money. It wasn't about fame. It wasn't about women. It was about I have to have so much pride in my soul that nothing can hurt me. You know, can't hurt me. So basically what I did was I said, how am I going to do this? I'm going to have to literally start doing things I don't want to do and doing them to the best of my ability because that's when I started gaining this mental edge. I started realizing life isn't about all this bullshit. Life is about one thing, being proud of the person you see in the mirror. So once that started happening, the mind started callousing. And the more the mind started callousing, the more people could and I became unstoppable. <clears throat> we are our worst enemy, especially nowadays. We want everything to come over fucking night. All of our results have to come today. If like I lose 106 pounds in less than three months, pretty, pretty so, daunting task. But if I had the mindset of I have to lose 106 pounds today, I, like it took me 18 you months. Disappear. I disappeared. I literally lost. I, I failed three times to be a Navy SEAL. It took me 18 months to be a Navy SEAL. The program's only six fucking months long. So what we have to do is we have to set our new norm. Our new normal. What does that mean? Our new normal. When I was in SEAL training, I was getting the shit kicked out of me every fucking day. And I kept on getting rolled back to day one. Rolled back to day one, week one. Most people would have fucking quit. But my mindset became this. This is my new normal. My new normal is I get up at 4 o'clock in the fucking morning and I get my fucking ass kicked every fucking day of my life. There's nothing outside of this world for me right now. This is my life. Like people who become POWs, prisoners of war. If they can't change no. their mind to think this is my new fucking normal, 
this is this is my life this is where i live you have to become adjusted to where you're at a lot of people say yeah you have to be able to look beyond this sometimes the pain is so miserable the suffering is so intense if you look too far beyond anything you're going to quit you have to have thick skin to get better you have to call yourself out if you're fat and you're fucked up and a lot of people don't want to go there they don't want to talk about the child they don't want to talk about their past they don't want to get to the root of the problems then they go why am i not getting better because there's a lot of shit in there you haven't dealt with brother you know people go to the gym like for instance these people go to the gym they get big they get jacked they can run fast, all that shit. But the only thing they're doing is they're coding over the mind. All you're doing is building a bigger, stronger quitter. Your mind hasn't gotten any stronger because you haven't gone back in there and dealt with shit. So the second adversity comes, like, my God, I'm so fucking fit. What's wrong? Your mind is still soft. Oh, yeah. This is a lifestyle. You can't temporarily dive oh, yeah. into it, sample it out roll out. This is something, man, that you have to acquire as part of your everyday grind. If you want to be great, if you want to be the baddest motherfucker ever at what you do, you're going to be misunderstood by everybody because you're going to be so fucking obsessed and so driven to get there. That's what it takes. Every second of your fucking life. You guys have balance? Yeah, balance is important for a lot of fucking people. It is. But if you want to fucking go to that edge where people do not like you, don't understand you, question everything you fucking do, you, you've arrived. When you are misunderstood to the point where fucking people think you're psycho, and you're nuts, and you're this and that, why are you in the fucking gym at 1 o'clock in the fucking morning? You just got through doing an op for fucking 13, 14 hours at the ranger school, man, at the gym. What's wrong? You would never understand what is wrong with me. And that's why... I'm so fucking glad you don't, because I'm in the right fucking spot. When people don't understand you anymore, you're in that spot of obsession and drive. When people are like, what the fuck is wrong with this guy? I don't want to talk to you, man, because you're not going to get it. This is a fucking lifestyle, man. Like, and people wonder, why am I not achieving? It's because once you want all of us, once we achieve something, we celebrate for a long time years fucking time you wonder why do i have drive anymore where's it all at if you don't develop a routine of suffering and suffering is not like go out and kill yourself every day it's being uncomfortable that keeps you hungry every day if you live in your victories for so long and say i'm gonna go challenge myself for 30 days or for two weeks or one this run this one marathon it is i did one marathon okay that's why it leaves you. It leaves you because you haven't set up the next obstacle. Obstacles is how you grow. You must continue to have friction. Friction is where growth is at. No friction, there's no growth. Twenty. I became obsessed. Twenty. I became obsessed with being the baddest motherfucker that God ever created. Am I that? I don't care. I believe it. Once you become obsessed with something, obsessed. It's okay to be unbalanced for a while. It's okay. Don't be, all this stuff people say, you got to be balanced. To be the best in the world at what you do. It's not about being a Navy SEAL, people. The best at what you do, you have to be unbalanced to find every bit of fucking energy and strength that you have to pull it off. Then you get balanced once you become great. And then you help other people become better from you being the best in the world. I'm trying to be the best I can to give you the best that I am. And it takes being fucking obsessed to where people think you're crazy. Become obsessed with being great. It changes everything. What separates me from a lot of people is they go into a daunting task. And the task is overwhelming. You have to be open-minded to the possibilities that I can do this. Once you shut your mind down to the possibility that it can be achieved, there's no way it can happen. Uh, if you're in a fight, you have to attack. You have to keep attacking. 
the enemy has to know he is not going to give up. You must break the soul of whatever the fuck is in front of you. Devise ways to break a soul of a human being, of, a, of an object, of, of, of whatever's in front of you. If you keep on attacking something, nothing wants to stand in front of anything that is relentless. Nothing. They tell you how you're supposed to feel. So you are feeling that way. I was like, huh? Don't let these motherfuckers tell you how you're supposed to feel. No, it's day one, motherfucker. But you have to have the will, the heart, the courage to go that distance when you're exactly jacked up. You have nothing left to give and get more. Get myself jacked in a horrible environment where everybody's miserable. Find strength in the misery. Because you can get a lot of power through misery. Using all that misery all right. for tons and tons and tons of drive and motivation. Take these motherfuckers' souls. And we start fueling off of that. We start fueling off the fact that, man, it takes one second of energy to steal everybody's. And then you have all the energy you need. That's all you need. You need to look at someone's eyes. You know how it is when you fight somebody, you broke that motherfucker. He's like, oh God, man, I know where to go back the next round. And you feel like, my God, I can fight all day. You have to take great pleasure in the fact that no one wants to be where the fuck you're at right now. Great pleasure, man. It must make you, know, it has to bring a passion out of you. It has to bring something very, very weird out of you, man. Like, you know, people don't really understand what that is. When you're in the worst environment possible, the worst situation possible, and everybody's looking like God, I hope this is. And you see that. Time slows down and you see that. You're you're feeling that. Everybody has that look on their face like, God, this guy go. Destructive leg runs. Most of the time, we move the starting end point. So on the way back, I start seeing people getting happy and shit. Because the end was near. But there were some asshole instructors that would hear the happiness and go right on past the end point. When that happens, everybody stopped talking. Heads would stop dropping. And I start taking fucking souls. At that time, I knew what happened in their mind. They were living off the hope factor. They hoped the instructors would stop running. They hoped the water was never cold. They hoped the weather was fucking good. I don't live off that hope shit. I wish the water was cold. I wish them motherfucking instructors keep on fucking running. I wish the fucking rain. <laughs> when the idiot is unknown. Is and the know. distance is unknown. That's when you know who the fuck you That's are. That's when you know who the fuck you are. Stay hard. Fucking right. You can't beat that shit. Oh, God. That's right. When the end is unknown. So, at that time. Oh man, yeah, that's it, I'm sorry. That's it, so today is about the legs day, my legs are feeling it now. A lot of version I did with rocking chairs with one pump. So I don't know how many I did, I was just going, so that's a wrap for me, so peace out everyone. And always remember this. With a calm and relaxed body, you'll have a calm and relaxed mind. It's an amazing feeling. It truly is. All right, that might be in this. Get yours in.